So now we're going to look at adding controls to user forms. Uh, a user form isn't much use without some controls. So what we're going to demonstrate is um, adding the controls and uh, programming for them. Now let's open our example that we were working on last time. Here it is. And I'm going to close the user form for now. And let's go to the Developer tab and to Visual Basic. And there's one important thing to notice here. There's two separate bits of code. First of all, the code for this workbook, which is this, the code that makes the form open when we start. And then there's also code for the form. Now, the code that um, makes the buttons do their thing is going to, oh, sorry, here's a toolbox, by the way. The, um, is, that belongs to the form, whereas uh, the code to open the form belongs to the workbook. So this may seem picky, but it's important to put things where they belong. So while we're working on the form, we're going to be putting its code there. Now, um, I'm going, I've got my presentation here, and we're going to follow along with this. So, we, if we want to actually look at the code for the form, if you right-click here, you can save view code, and it shows you the code. So this is where we write our code for the user form. All right, so let's... Close this, and I'm going to close this guy too if I can. Okay, let's get the form back. So you see, you can show whatever you want. All right, um, so next, we're ready to add controls, and the thing we're going to use for that is this toolbox, which has the controls in it. So let's just say a little about the different kinds of controls you have. And this, the view we were looking at is called the design view because that's where you design your form and put the controls on. So the different controls we'll be using, first of all, there's a thing called list boxes, which allows the program to put the data in a little frame that the user can see. And you can also use it for giving the user a list of choices to pick from. The command button, which is the first one, uh, so this is the uh, list box, oh sorry, combo box, here's the list box. The command button looks like this. That's just a button you can push to make something happen. Labels allow us to put useful information and instructions on the form and also to show things. There are check boxes which we can use to give options and option buttons which we can use to give exclusive options. Uh, frames, which we can use to group controls like option buttons, which is important. Um, we'll go into that more later. Text boxes are placed on the form for users to type some input. And there are others. Uh, there are a lot of them. We're not going to use everything this term. Okay. So um, when you do something with a control, uh, like checking a checkbox or type in a text box or click a button, those are events. And for every event that can happen, you, you have a built-in procedure that can respond to that event. Now, nothing will happen unless you actually write code. It's like the workbook open event. If you haven't got a workbook open procedure, then when you open the workbook, no code is going to execute. And it's the same idea with the control events. If an event happens and you haven't written any code for it, then Visual Basic will just ignore it. So uh, the most common event that we're going to use is having a button that the user clicks to make something happen. So, okay, um, we are going to find the user form control page, and I showed you, you right-click here and go view code, and here's the code for our form. All right, um, it looks a lot like the window for the code for the workbook, so be careful you've got it straight. Now I'm going to add some controls. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So back here, um, we're going to use a label. So that's a text box, we're going to use that too. This one's a label, so I'm going to go right here 
and here's my label. Now, as long as the label's selected, it's the properties of the label that are showing up in the properties box here. And what I'm going to do is put in this caption and say, um, type your name in the text box. Okay, and now that's showing up on my label. And just to show you if I want to change something like the font or the size, uh, let's make it a little bigger. Okay, that's a little too big. Um, let's try 12. All right, that looks reasonable. And now um, I said type your name in the text box, so now I need a text box right here. And I'm going to have my program use what's typed in the text box. So what I want to do is give that text box a better name. And I'm going to call it TXT name because it's going to be the person's name. Okay, now that's done. Push return. And now um, I want a button. Let's put that here and I'm going to give it a better name um, now I have standard prefixes that I like to use to start the names of my controls and text boxes start with txt the button is going to start sorry with btn and I'll just call it push and for its caption, I'm going to say um, push me after you type your name. Okay. And finally, I'm going to have one more control, and that's a label down here. Make a big label. Um, and I'm going to, because the program's going to change it, I'm going to call it LBL show. And um, let's change the font to be size 12. Okay. Now I'm ready to write some code. So what I'm going to do, I want to write code for the button, so I'm going to double click. And Visual Basic goes ahead and guesses that the event I want to use is pushing the button, and it writes that for me. So I'll, I'll put my option explicit here. I'm leaving off my comments. Those are in the version that's posted. And what I want to have happen when the button is pushed is that, first of all, uh, let's see. I'm going to need a variable called name that's of type um, string. And what I want to do is say that this name equals um, the text that's been typed in that text box. So it was called, called text name dot text. Okay, so that's how I captured the data that was typed in there. Oh, one other thing I want to do with this label, I want to set its property. It has a property called visible, and I'm going to set that to false. So it'll be invisible when the program first starts running. Okay, so back to the code. I'm going to say that label show dot text. Oops. Maybe it's caption. Yes, caption equals. Now, I, what I wanted to say is I'm going to put the word hello and a space. Maybe I'll put a comma and a space. And I'll stick on it um, the name. And then I'll stick on that. Uh, an exclamation point. And I'll make the label, whoops. Oh, and I see I had, I typoed that. Should have been an ampersand. 
And now I want to make the label visible. So I'll put label show dot visible equals true. So here I'm changing the properties um, as the program runs. Okay, I like that. So let's give it a shot. Um, I'll save everything. And I'm going to close everything up. So close this and close this. And now I'm going to open, type your name in the text box. Cindy, push me after you type your name. There it is. Okay, so that was a quick demo and you saw everything work. Let's just go over the slides. In the slides, I've written down a lot of what I just did. And um, I called it label hello in the slides, but you'll, you'll see it's just a minor difference. And uh, again, make sure that when you name controls, you give them meaningful names. Start it with BTN for button, LBL for label, TXT for text box. Then the labels and other controls that you don't actually write code for, you can leave their names unchanged. So this label, for example, is called label one, and I don't care because I'm not using it in my program. Uh, you saw how I got started writing the code by double clicking and um, VBA assumed I wanted to use the button push, which I did. Uh, there are other routines and you can find those, uh, but it'll give you the most common one, which is usually the one you want. And then this, this just goes through the process we did. This shows you the nicely formatted and commented code that I wrote earlier. And then this just shows you my program in action. So give it a try yourself. And uh, that's that.